Hey, this is Barry from Sunken Mine Railroad, and here's another in the series of my restoration videos on my Marklin 8910Z scale Toporama that I'm restoring. Um, this is a fifth or sixth in the series. So here's where I am. It's been a little bit of a while since I um, posted a video, and I hit some roadblocks. Um, some of the track that I purchased originally was used, and um, or you corroded and if you know anything about z-scale trains if the track is corroded uh it's going to be really hard to run the, the locomotives and when i was setting it up i noticed that all of the switches i have are brand new and most of the straight track is brand new but uh, i really wasn't happy considering that this i found this brand new on ebay uh, i really want everything to be new or new old stock so um, i had to go and find um better track or newer track that was in the white box so this is some of the track that was that uh, i'll end up selling this as used track on ebay uh, in the future to try to recoup some of my extra cost um second thing is um originally i had planned on these uncouplers to be connected to uh, 55 millimeter um, uh, um, uh, isolator tracks that Mark Lynn sells is these guys right here and one thing that I noticed when I started putting it together was that there's no place for these to fit on the sidings uh, the original uncoupler track was 110 millimeters it was the size of a standard piece of Mark Lynn track but the new ones are only half that size so um, when I started to mount the uncouplers I know I mean excuse me the isolators I noticed that they just don't fit there's there's just too much material in these where they, they're sort of going to bump into the switches and, and things so nix that i'm going to take these guys and sell them to this these are uh 85 88s so i had six of these so what i decided to do was to purchase some uh 8504 pieces which are 25 millimeter they're tiny little things and i put them on each side of the um the, the uh, uncouplers so here's the uncoupler I've got a um, 25 millimeter, 25 millimeter and a coupler. And if you're doing the math, that means that they are about five millimeters short. So what I've decided to do instead is I put isolators on all the sidings on the, the positive side of the track. Uh, so there's one here, 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 here. So every, I've got six sidings and each one has an isolator on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed them from the back end. So since these are all now five millimeters short, I'm going to cut some track and solder them onto the piece on the back side and then feed these tracks from the ends of them. So each one of these, ideally, I'll have this will be on one transformer and this will be on the second transformer. And then I might do a third transformer for this, but it's unlikely I would move uh, trains around on the inside track while there's another locomotive running around. So um, I'll probably just keep two transformers. Um, so that's one thing I've changed. Uh, so what I'll do again is I'll, I'll run my uh, controls for each siding on the back end of the track, and I've already got the isolators in place. Second thing I'm doing is... Um, for some reason, I remember that the trains, uh, this this is backwards from where you normally see it from the picture. But what I noticed was the the original plans had the feeder tracks here and here on, on this side of the train. I noticed that when the trains got over sort of into this area, they would slow down a bit. So the uh, the 10 year old and me just noticed that they slowed down. The, the 56 year old person decided to put um, feeder rails over here as well so I'm going to have each uh, um, uh, main line is going to have two feeder rails to to remove some of the voltage drop um, and then w one of the other things that I have noticed is that the new feeder rails come with this thing here which is a radio uh, RF um, radio frequency isolator that keeps these trains from you know, transmitting radio frequencies that might impact your radio and your TV and that kind of thing. Now that it's 220, I really don't believe that these are going to impact any electronics I have in this house. Having said that, I'm going to snip these off, but I'm going to keep a couple of them 
and attach them to the main transformer lead to the whole layout uh, so it'll be under the track and you won't see them I'll solder them back on so um, that's where I stand today um, the the next steps for me really are to mark where I'm going to drill holes I've got 12 switches I've got six sidings and would that need to be isolated and I have six um, uh, d d uh, uncouplers so those are the and I also have to drill for the feeder holes so I'm going to do that next and then once I've drilled all the holes in I'm going to um, start to mount the track and um, I've noticed that or I've I when I've gone online there's really three ways to mount Marklin track if you're not going to glue it down I don't want to glue it down because I might want to pull it up and maybe modify it later or maybe I'll have a bad switch that I need to replace someday or something that I, I really don't want to glue it down you can glue it down I'm really also not going to do ballast it, my original intent is to replicate this picture as closely as possible um, so I am going to start with Marklin brads and I'll take a picture later of what these look like but these Marklin brads are very very small and there's a couple of different ways that you can you can put them on the, the the first inclination is to get a tiny hammer and tap them in but that won't work um, what I've done is um, I have I found some pins at Michaels which I talked about in an earlier video some ballpoint pins and I've been attaching the track where I want it with these with these pins and they do two things one is they allow me to mount the track squarely and move it around uh, without having to commit second thing is they they're a nice pilot hole they happen to be about the same exact diameter as the marklin nails uh, so once i pull them out i can just put the um the marklin pins back in that's one so that's the pins themselves i found this tool um from micromark it was kind of expensive but it's a brad um it's a uh, basically a pin pliers and what it does is it allows you to grip the pin this way and then you can push it in hopefully you can see that there we go and you can push it in and then lift it a little bit and then push it in some more um this is really nifty i was using this to put the pins on and then the other tool that i got which i'm going to demonstrate is the um this is a, uh, a Peter Post tool. It's a it's a custom thing that's designed specifically to push these tiny tiny pins into. And what it has is it has a little. Here's what it looks like, and it has a little magnet that grabs the brad. If I can do it, here we go. You you can grab the brad with with the pin. Excuse me, with the tool. There it is. And then it sort of captures it. And with this, you can turn it upside down and press it into the track. I thought this was really, really nice. And uh, I got this from Zscale Hobo. Um, the other thing that I got was um, these really, really... So I got... He sent me some track fixing pins. Um, again, I, I'm not getting anything for free. But I've got these pins are the same diameter as the Marklin pins. But they're a little bit longer. So with these guys, I'm going to save these in case I destroy something and I want to push the pin a little further in. These actually would go in almost the entire length of, of the board that I'm using. So I'm concerned that if I use these, they're going to stick out the bottom. So I'm going to hold off on using those um, unless I need them. And then the other thing that I got, which I thought was also interesting, were these really, really tiny screws. They're 0.9 by 5 millimeter um, screws and there's that's what they look like looking at these uh, screws as to how big they are versus the hole that is provided by these mark on tracks I think that, that these screws are going to be a little bit too big for me so I'm going to hold off on using these for now but I can see where I might need them. Maybe maybe I might use them to attach some accessories or s some of the buildings with these screws. So I'm going to hold off on using those. So um, 
I'm going to start marking this up now. So I have all the holes drilled for the track now and the next thing I want to do is drill the holes for all the buildings I'm going to put on. So I'm going to take the bases up off and uh, mark some holes for the lights for the building. I have all the uh, original Marklin Mini Cub lights for the buildings. It's part number 8950 and um, so that'll be the next step is for me to drill the holes for the buildings. I'd like to have all the holes done before I start to do any you know track um, attachment. All right, so I've taken all the base plates out and I'm going to take a peek at this and start to melt these guys. Or at least mark where I'm going to drill the holes. So one thing I really like about this toy is that uh, it's pretty obvious where things go, which makes it nice. Most of them, this thing is so tiny, but most of these have uh, basically a slot where this this light's going to fit right in there, like that. Um, I don't know where these back holes are. I guess if you want additional lighting, you could put them there. But uh, I think I'm just going to do two in the front for the instructions. And then uh, the hole for the lights is a little bit off to the side. It's under the platform, so it's not as critical for these where they go. Okay, I've drilled all the holes for my Marklin lights for all the buildings, and I vacuumed all the powder and dust away from the MDO. Let's take a look underneath and um, see what the holes look like from the back side. And then uh, I think I'm going to end this one here. Once, once I get the wires in the holes, I'll start the next video about attaching all of the track. Let's take a peek, see how it came out. So here's all the holes underneath. I think I'm going to tidy up these holes and then maybe touch them up with some paint first before I uh, finish this guy up. So thanks for uh, joining me today and uh, be on the lookout. Now that I've got my all of my materials and I've got some free time, I'm gonna start to um, post these a little more often. I'd like to take a moment to thank Frank from Zscale Hobo and Mike from Euro Model Trains who helped me replace some of the track that I was uh, missing and uh, for some of their advice. Thanks again and see you next time.